All right, you ready to get into the Word of God tonight? All right. Let's get our Bibles open, please, to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And then we're going to declare something over this Bible tonight. All right. Colossians chapter 1. And then put your finger in that Bible right there and then just hold it up in the air for us, please. And let's, let's speak over this, this our Bible. Yes, sir. Wait for them to get it for us here. Praise the Lord. It's coming. I got it? All right. Let's declare this over our Bible. Ready to go. This is my Bible. It is the inspired, infallible, immutable word of God. I long for it more than necessary food. I love it, and I'm never offended. I live by it, and I prosper in whatever I do. The word that I'm about to receive will sanctify me, build me up, and give me an inheritance among the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's uh, read Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19 through 23. Colossians 1, 19 through 23. You have it? Okay, let's read together. Ready, read. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became. Again, verse 23 says, that If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. I want to focus on this part, continue in the faith. That's our subject tonight, continue in the faith. You may be seated tonight. Glory to God. Continue in the faith. How many of y'all agree that we are living in very, very interesting times? Very, very interesting times we're living in. Uh, I, I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. We were preaching in another church, and I talked about the old adage from the, uh, I think it was the Grapes of Wrath uh, novel that we all read back years ago. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. You remember that? Charles Dickens. And uh, <clears throat> it, these are very interesting times because Again, for the world, these are perilous times, but for the body of Christ, these are glorious times. And you and I have to know how to discern and distinguish the difference so that you and I don't get caught up in what's going on out there. Uh, how many of y'all understand there's a serious oppression that's going on out there? I mean, when you keep people locked up in their homes for months or you know, weeks on end at, at, at this point, and it may linger into months some places, uh, there's an oppression when people are panicky, uh, and afraid. In fact, um, Isaiah 54 says something. Let me go over there real quick. Y'all don't have to turn over there. I'll, I'll get it and they can put it on the screen for us. Isaiah 54 and um, verse 14. Look at Isaiah 54 verse, verse 14. It says, in righteousness you shall be Established. what? Established. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear and from terror for it shall not come near you. So notice oppression comes because of fear. He says you shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear. So when you have fear that's blanketing the planet then you understand why oppression is so heavy. Why there's so much sadness. Why an oppression uh, is, is a pushing down that leads to a depression on the inside. The Bible says anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. Anxiety, uh, in, I think in King James says, makes the heart stoop. So in other words, uh, as I shared with some people, I was talking to, to a pastor friend of mine uh, in another, another city uh, here, but still in his county, talked about the sheriff's deputies were telling him that crime is down. I mean, major, I mean crime is down by major numbers here in the county, but Domestic violence has skyrocketed, and so has suicide. Why? Because there's oppression. And the reason for oppression is fear. 
So you and I ought not be living in fear. So if we don't let fear grip us, then we don't have to be under any kind of oppression. I mean, when you're walking in faith, you can lose your job and still be full of joy. <laughs> Come on now, you can get a pay cut and still be walking around whistling Dixie. Right? All kind of things that can be, can be going all around you, but because you are continuing in faith, as opposed to letting fear grip you, oppression has no way to uh, press you down. Amen? In fact, it's just, it's just astounding to me the, the difference in perspective on this whole situation. See, when you're in faith, you have a totally different outlook on this thing. I mean, when you're, when you're not in faith, you're, all, you're just consumed with going through. But when you're in faith, you're thinking about coming out. Praise God. This will all be over pretty soon, praise the Lord. And I'm going to come out better than I was when I went in. Are you, are you hearing me tonight? So we're not going to operate in that. We're not going to let ourselves get sidelined by demonic distractions. By demonic distractions. What's going around us, listen ladies and gentlemen, what's going around us is there are some real things that are happening, but we got to make sure we don't let demonic distractions get us off course. And that's what the enemy is trying to do is to get us off course to get us to leave faith. Now, I, I, I hold no punches about this and I've, I've made this known, made it clear how I feel. What I know to be true, there's an attack on the church. And I'm just, I'm just baffled that so many pastors can't see this. So many people in the church can't see the attack that's on the church itself. Right. When, when places, they're trying to reopen many places, but it's everything except the church. They're going to open movie theaters in Georgia, but not the church. Well, something's wrong with that. Isn't that the same mass gathering? I don't, I'm not sure I follow was what the, the reasoning behind that. So uh, I've, I've already been on my soapbox about that enough. What I want you to really understand is there's an attack more so not just on the church, but on faith. That's right. That's right. Because here's the reality. Even when churches do resume their meetings, Jesus, he, when he, he said when the Son of Man comes, he didn't say, well, I find the church in the earth. He said when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Well, there's plenty of churches, hundreds of thousands of churches. But what he's looking for is faith. See, the Bible didn't say we walk by being a part of the church. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. The just doesn't live by going to church. The just live by faith. You can go to church and not have faith. Isn't that right? It, I mean, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, not all men have faith. That's why he was very careful with what he said and who he was around because he said, not all men have faith. And my job here as a pastor, as a shepherd, is to make sure that we keep building our faith because that's what we're going to walk by. It doesn't matter uh, if, if this crisis or pandemic lasts, if, it's, if, they, if they declare it over Friday or it lasts through 2025, you're going to have to go through it by faith. If they declare it over, you're going to still need faith? That's what we tell people, you know, people that believe in the God to get pregnant. you got to have some faith if you're going to get pregnant. And once you're pregnant, you're going to have to have faith to go through that pregnancy. Well, you don't let your guard down once you have the baby. How many of y'all parents know that you need faith all the time when you're raising children? <laughs> you need faith all the time. The older they get, the more faith you need. <laughs> I'm right about it. You need to have more faith. So there's an attack on faith. And so what I'm finding, what's been, been a, very disappointing but not necessarily shocking, is that there are many people who have been on the fence uh, wavering as it pertains to faith. And what's happening is this crisis is starting to expose even more uh, fake Fake versus genuine faith. 
we're discovering a lot of people who have had what I would call fake faith. But there's a genuine faith. In fact, turn over to 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And if you can't find it, it's on this, they'll put it on the screen. 1 Peter 1, <clears throat> verses 3 through 7. Well, they're going to put it on the screen anyway, because that's just what they do. <laughs> Our media team is awesome. Yes, Sister Liz, I told your testimony about you walking around the store with the message plan and somebody following you around the store and going to the man's house to pray and letting them, letting them you know, hear the message. I mean, see, the word works. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a what? Living, Living hope. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Not reserved until you get there, it's just that's where it sits. You can access it now by faith, Right? who are kept by the power of God through faith. faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, the last days. That's where we are. Okay? In this, you, watch this. This is important, ladies and gentlemen, because this is describing these last times that we're in now. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. So right now, what we're dealing with in the earth, what you're dealing with as a, as, uh, what, what we're dealing with as a church, what you're dealing with as a believer is various trials which are coming along and they're trying to grieve you. Am I right about it? Come on, you're dealing with the trials. You, what, what, what kind of trials am I dealing with, Pastor? I'm, I still have my job. Yeah, but you came to church tonight, and your, your folk are looking at you on camera. They're, trying to, they're searching the TV, trying to see if they can find you on the camera. All eyes on me. They're trying to see, are oh, you at church? And they, you know, your neighbors, when you go home, they see you dressing your church clothes. or they, You know, whatever. They know you've been to church. Now it's like you have the cooties because you've been to church. You understand? Like we're back in third grade. <laughs> right? So there's various trials that we're dealing with. And, and here's the reality. Whether you and I, uh, and we're not, going to be infected, infected by uh, this virus, but we are all affected. You understand? All of us are dealing with the various trials that, that's going on. But he says, now watch this. Watch these trials. Listen to this, verse 7. Are y'all seeing it? That the genuineness. of your faith. So there's a test. These trials are, are exposing or revealing the genuineness or we can also then understand the fakeness of your faith. Now I believe I'm looking at a bunch of people, I know I am, who you are demonstrating by you being here genuine faith. I'm not picking on anybody that's staying home. I'm not picking on any churches because everybody, every pastor has to do what the Lord tells them to do. And they better make sure the Lord's telling them to do that. But your faith, any trial, not just now, any trial, you go through marital problems, you go through problems with your children, you go through problems on your job, anytime your faith is being tested. And your faith, uh, the genuineness of it is being tested. It says, being much more precious than gold that perishes. Watch this. This is what most Christians don't like. Though it is tested by, by marshmallows, by cotton balls. It's tested by fire. Your faith is tested by fire. Now, nobody looks forward to being in fire. You don't mind being around fire, but in fire. But your faith has to go through fiery trials. And so, again, what we're seeing here now throughout the world is this, this um, differentiation between, is that a word, differentiation? It sounded, it sounded wrong when it came out. I mean, I knew it was a word in here, but when it came out, that didn't sound right. This distinction between... Uh, <laughs> genuineness and the, and the fake, the phony. And there are a lot of believers 
if you allow me to say that. <laughs> they, they believe in, you know, like I said, they believe in Jesus. But you're finding they don't believe Jesus. They don't believe what he's actually said. Okay? And we don't, we don't want to be found in that predicament. Okay? So this attack on faith is causing everyone's faith to be tested. Now I want you to look back, please, at Acts 14. Acts 14. Hallelujah. Because here's what we need to be doing. Tell your neighbor, your faith is on trial. You're being tested. How many of y'all remember back when you were younger and you used to, you know, back, back when I was a young, young boy, you know, a young, young man, we used to have, everybody's have gold. You can go to, you know, the mall, you used to buy gold by the inch. You used to go to the, to the flea market and buy gold by the inch. And we, we used to order gold from home shopping or QV, well, we, the QVC wasn't around. Home shopping, we used to buy that gold back then. And I remember I bought some gold one time and, you know, you come out itching because you found that this, it wasn't real. Here you, are, here you are thinking you have something. Look at that. You bought it because, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to impress the girls, Deacon, Deacon Gershon, right? Right? I'm talking about back then. We're going to impress the girls. We got our little Figaro chain and herringbone chain. Got our little Mr. T starter kit, you know, and bling it all over. And it's all just fake as a $3 bill. Gold tooth, fake as a $3 bill. You're going to impress people. Right? I mean, you didn't have to, have to take it to the jewel and melt it down. You just, you just played basketball in it and you found out. Start turning green, corrosion, and your neck start itching. Right? Because everything that glitters isn't gold. And everybody that says they have faith does not necessarily have faith. You see, faith, we notice from James... Faith without works dead. is dead, being alone. So some people are finding out they have faith, but it's dead faith. And dead faith is as good as no faith. Are you following what I'm saying to you? You see, again, we live by faith. So we're going to need this faith all the time. Not just for a virus or a pandemic. We need faith all the time. We live by it. Glory to God. My wife and I have been on, on a crash course for the last 18 years of, of learning how to live by faith. We didn't know it until 2002 and God said, all right, from now on, you're on faith. Okay. So strip away everything. All right. So we learned how to live by faith. So we were well prepared when this, this particular pandemic hit because we already learned to live by faith. Oh, you hear what I'm saying to you? Well, what are we going to do? Now is we're, we're going to continue in faith. We're not going to draw back now. We're not going to change course now. Amen? Look at uh, Acts 14, verse 21 and 22. Acts 14, 21 and 22. This is uh, about Paul and his, his uh, cohorts when they were out there uh, ministering. It says, when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, Doing what? Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to do what? Continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. So they were strengthening their souls, strengthening their souls, because it's your soul that's in the battle. Come on now, am I right about it? It's your soul that's in this battle. Your spirit knows faith. Your spirit knows the word is right. Your spirit being made perfect with God and just with God, your spirit knows that it's supposed to be doing so and so. But it's your soul where this battle lies. Remember Paul talked about casting down imaginations or arguments, taking captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's your soul where there's this war going on. I'm in it every day. Every day I'm in this war. Every time the news comes on, I try not, not to see it, but I get these feeds that come on and tell me about, you know, well, the numbers have gone up over here. Numbers have gone up. Then even worse, they send a feed. Oh, 35 pastors died from the church of, you know, whatever. And oh, my God, and pastors died. Bishops died from COVID-19. And I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I'm really rocking in my soul. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I know, see, see, for me, for me, when people tell me that, well, you know so-and-so, you know so-and-so, see, I immediately know because I understand spiritual realities. Right. 
Remember I taught you that? Yes. I understand spiritual laws. So I have to say to respond to them, well, what spiritual laws did they break, did they violate? See, and if you don't understand spiritual laws, you can be running around here rattling off at your mouth, speaking death over yourself. A spiritual law of confession, life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's a law. Just like gravity. If any one of us jump, jump off this building, we're not going to go up or sideways. We're going to go straight down. Right? There's a law of gravity. So there's a law, the law, of, the Bible talks about in Romans 3, the law of faith. Why, why am I not worried about going broke? Because there's a law of sowing and reaping. I've been sowing, so I'm going to reap. You follow what I'm saying? So I, 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 don't, I don't let other people's experience pull me out of faith. Y'all got me on this here? Tell you, but continue in the faith. So your soul is at war. So that's why Paul, they were strengthening the souls of the disciples. Of the disciples. How? Exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying. Watch this, Miss Anita. And saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Uh-oh. He's, he's exhorting them. He's encouraging them. Latoya, you must go through many tribulations. This is your encouragement tonight. Are y'all catching this here? There's exhorting and strengthening their soul. I just want to let you know, Shantae, you're going to go through many tribulations into the kingdom of God. Now, how encouraging is that? <laughs> like, what? He's preparing. And what he's telling them is, is that you're going to go through. If you focus on the word through, I'm all right. I'm just going through. <laughs> I'm not going to stop the tribulations. The tribulations are not going to defeat me. I'm not going to be overcome. I'm going to go through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I'm not, I'm not staying there. I'm not setting up camp there. I'm just going through. Glory to God. If you're going to go to one, one city to another, sometimes you've got to go through a tunnel. Well, don't be scared. You're just going through it. Don't pull over and put the car in park. Just keep on trucking and go through it. Before you know it, you'll be on the other side of it. So we must through. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Now, to the theologian, you may say, well, wait a minute. We're already in the kingdom of God. Are we already in the kingdom of God? Well, yes, we are in the kingdom in terms of, of our position. He's talking about of your practical experience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am in the kingdom in my position. Just like the Bible says that we are already seated together in Christ in heavenly places. That's our divine position. But physically, we are not there. So there's a difference between what's your position and your practical place. Are you following me? Yeah. So when he says we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God, we are already in a part of the kingdom. The Bible says that God is in Colossians 1, I think it's 13, that God has already del delivered us from the power of darkness and translated, verse 12, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1, verse 12. So we, we are already in the kingdom, but he's talking about now living the life of the kingdom. Um... If you've ever watched a uh, space shuttle, one of, the, one of our U.S. Uh, shuttle launches and missions, and they orbit and so forth, uh, when, when we send an astronaut into space, that astronaut is already an Earthling. Am I right about it? He's an Earthling. But he is traveling through space and has to now re-enter the earth. And when he has to re-enter the earth, he has to enter earth's atmosphere or back the earth through much tribulation. 
are, are y'all seeing this here? When, when that, that space capsule, that rocket, that shuttle, uh, they have to really um, build it and, and, and set it where it's protected and safe because it's going to pass through, I mean, the, the, the degrees, the temperature is going to pass through to enter is, is so, so uh, uh, hot that if they've not put up heat shields, enough protection, enough shield of faith, they will burn up coming through the atmosphere to enter earth. So when Paul says that you and I must through much tribulation, many tribulations enter the kingdom of God, he's saying, yes, we are kingdom citizens. But to enter, the, to re-enter what Adam had before the fall. We must enter through much tribulation. We're going to pass through the fire and according to Isaiah, not be burned. Why? Because we have a heat shield called the shield of faith whereby we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And when, when, you, when you watch, Deacon Gersh, I know you've been over to NASA. We drove over to NASA. We drove over there uh, a few weeks ago. Over there, uh, where is that? Uh, Cape, Cape Canaveral. We drove over there to see, you know, little rockets and all that kind of stuff. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, and, and so uh, I remember, you know, you see these, these rockets come in, and when they plant it, you know, there's a movie uh, that's an awesome movie called Hidden Figures. And, and it, was, it was awesome to see how uh, these scientists and mathematicians, they have to calculate with pinpoint precision, exact timing as to when that ship can re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. I hope you see what I'm about to tell you. God has calculated precise timing for you. You are not here by happenstance. You are not here by accident. Your life is not spinning out of control. God has been holding you with his strong right hand, and he knows it's almost your time. In fact, I declare in just a few more moments, it's going to be your time to leave space and enter the kingdom of God. Precise timing, Pauline. They know they have a certain window. Window of opportunity. And they, here's what happens. They know the scientists can calculate this. When they miss that particular window, you got to go around again. Anybody who's ever flown on an airplane and when you were going to land at an airport, they some, have something sometimes called a holding pattern. Where if you miss the window of opportunity to land, they say, hold on, no problem. Just circle around another time. And we'll let you know when you have another opportunity. So I want to encourage somebody tonight, even if you missed it in your past, even if you messed up in your past, the Lord says I'm about to give you another window of opportunity. I'm about to let you re-enter and come into the kingdom of God atmosphere because it's your time. Somebody give God a shout about that. We must through, must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So he says, he says to do that, you have to continue in the faith. You must continue in the faith. So this is not the time, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the Bible says, I think it's in Daniel 7, around verse 25, somewhere around that area, that says the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. The time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. So God has set a time for you and me to possess the kingdom. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent, come on, help me out, take it by force. How do you take it by force? You use your faith. 
That means when you're up against tribulation, when you're up against trial, when you're up against temptation, when you're being criticized, when you're being ostracized, when you're being picked on, when you're being cast out, when you're being castigated, you got to have your shield of faith. I will not quit. I will continue. I'm going to continue in the faith. Somebody say, I will continue in the faith. You got to be violent. Y'all got to hear what I said. You got to be violent. I'm not talking about going out there and hitting somebody in the head. I'm talking about you standing against. Put it like this. If somebody were going to come try to snatch your uh, money or snatch your, 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 your car or snatch your child, are you going to be passive? Or are you going to be violent? I'm going to oops all upside your head if you don't get off me. <laughs> Come on, am I right, Trish? You, you, so so when, you wanna, when you wanna possess the kingdom, you can't be passive. Well, you know, if, if it's all right, you know. No, 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 I'm taking this. God said it's our time to possess the kingdom of God. If everybody else quit, I'm going to keep on going. If I have to go by myself, I'm going to go by myself. If I'm not invited to any more family reunions, I'm going to keep on going with Jesus Christ all by myself. That's violence. That's violence. So we got to continue in the faith. All right? Now let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, please. Glory to God. Are you learning anything? Are you being re-energized, rejuvenated? All right, 1 Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1, I just want to use this one verse here. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. This is Apostle Paul speaking to his son of the faith, Timothy. He says, now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. In the latter times. He says the Spirit expressly says. Now, my, my Bible, if you got a little call, center column reference, there's a little uh, one by that word expressly, and it says here explicitly. You know what explicit means, right? Explicit means out in the open. It's like it ain't, it's not hiding. You know, when you, songs have explicit lyrics or videos have explicit stuff, you know, content, whatever, explicit. So the, the Holy Ghost explicitly says, in other words, he's not hiding this. He wants to make sure everybody understands that in the latter times, the last days that we're in now, some will. Some will. Not me, sir. Some Not everybody. Come on. I want to make sure you're not into some. You're not part of the dumb some. Ask your neighbor, are you part of the dumb some? <laughs> or the wise guys? Which one are you? <laughs> So some will depart from the faith. So we should not be surprised by what we're seeing. It's just frustrating and disappointing. But it's not unexpected because the Holy Spirit said so. And he's not a liar. He cannot lie. So some will depart from, this, from the faith. And he's going to tell us why. What's going to cause them, the quanda? He says, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. If you have a King James Bible, it'll say giving heed to seducing spirits. So that word seducing is deceiving. So giving heed, in other words, people will depart from the faith listening to seducing or deceiving spirits. That means there are, there are the Holy Spirit saying this, but there are evil spirits who also say things because it says doctrines of demons teachings. So demons teach things. Right? Whether they, demons try to talk to you directly. You understand that? You understand demons talk to you, talk to you directly? Let me, let me make sure I help everybody who's maybe, maybe new at this. I try to teach people this when I'm trying to help people overcome sin. I'm trying to help people overcome temptation. Thoughts that you have do not come from you. Thoughts come to you. Thoughts do not come from you. They come to you. 
Got it? Well, if it's an evil thought, it's not from God and it's not from you. I'm going to give you one more guess as to where it could be. It's from demons. They put thoughts, they bring thoughts to you. That's why the Bible tells you, take every thought captive, lock it up to the obedience of Christ. That's why Jesus said, take no thought saying. So even though the devil brings thoughts, as long as you don't start repeating what he says, it doesn't become your thought. But when you start speaking what he says, now that thought does become your thought. That just helped two people right there. You begin to, to, build, to build a thought pattern and a thought process. You begin to develop what we call a mindset. You got it? So demons do teach. But many times what I want you to understand is these demonic teachings are being spoken through people. So everybody has their YouTube list of pastors. It's, right now we got a YouTube smorgasbord. Everybody's home, nobody's going to church, so everybody's got a YouTube smorgasbord and a Facebook smorgasbord and a whole buffet of teaching that they're hearing. And if you're not discerning Hello, somebody. If you're not discerning, if you're not mature in the faith, if you're not knowledgeable of the scriptures yourself, you'll hear things and think, oh, that sounds good. That sounds right. Because there's a little tinge of truth to it. But you don't realize that that, that rat poison is 99% corn. 1% arsenic or strychnine, whatever they use. And all it takes is that 1% to kill you. So if you're not discerning, you think, oh, I just, that sounds good. Man, they got a big church. That must be right. Or they got a whatever, they pretty wig on or whatever. It must be right. Oh, they, they got pretty wigs on YouTube. Man. <laughs> but, but I want you to understand, there are deceiving spirits. Now, what makes a, a deceiving spirit deceiving is that it sounds right. It's not deception if you can tell. It sounds right. But let's also use the, the, the King James word seducing. Well, a seducing spirit is something soft. If you read, if you read Proverbs every month, chapters 5, 6, and 7, for sure, you know all about seducing spirit. Watch out for that old woman with those lips, the eyelids. Woo, 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 woo. Right? The, the lashes that get you. Right? You, you come on, y'all. We've been reading it for a long time. Five, six, and seven. And he doesn't know it. Her house is the is the place of slaughter. It leads down to, to hell. Right? So seduction is very, very uh, subtle. It's a it's a slow coercion. It's an alluring. And that's what the devil has been doing to the body of Christ for some, a, a long time now, is seducing people out. If I can get you to believe a little bit of deception, and I'll just spoon feed you. I, I, the devil won't come out and just say, Jesus Christ never was born. He's not going to come and say that. He's not going to come and tell, tell a, 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 a born-again Baptist, Jesus Christ didn't die and rise from the grave. But we're going to stand on that. We, that's, that's the gospel. We know that. He's not going to tell a, a born-again, tongue-talking Pentecostal that tongues is of the devil. He's not going to tell them that because they're going to say, no, no, my mama been speaking in tongues all her life. He'll, he'll spoon feed something little, some, something little, something little, something subtle like you don't have to go to church. We are the church. Wherever we are, we are the church. Now, is it true? Yes. It is true we are the church. Wherever you go, you are the church. However, I mean, think about when Jesus Christ was on the mountain or in the wilderness, 
And he's tempted 40 days of the devil. Everything the devil told him was true. Everything the devil told him. Isn't it written? That he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bury you up in their hands unless you dash, dash your foot against the stone. That's exactly right. And Jesus is like, yeah, but it's also written. You see? So he, he, you, you got you to be able to discern, okay, I see what's behind this, this little joker right here. And can I tell you something? Y'all didn't say anything. Yeah. why you're the pastor because you get a question like that you need to say hey pastor dad whatever hey uh can i ask can i run something by you well i don't need no pastor i don't need no that's nothing i don't need no preaching no teach as long as i got king jesus Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my people go astray like sheep having no shepherd okay all right so there are seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Let me, let me pick up the pace a little bit here. Okay, go to 2 Timothy, please. You're in 1 Timothy now. Go over one book to 2 Timothy in chapter 3. I hope so. I'm hope, I hope I'm helping somebody. There's all kind of little nuggets coming out tonight for everybody. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to read, start reading at verse 10. It says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. Now, this is Paul talking to Timothy again. So this is Paul, his pastor. You have carefully followed my doctrine. Not all over YouTube and, and Facebook. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and listen, remember those same three cities we just named? What persecutions I endure, and out of them all, the Lord deliver me. So he says, Timothy, you've seen what I've been through. He says, yes, here's here's another exciting, encouraging scripture, Liz. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus. (laughs) This is an encouragement to us tonight. How many of y'all desire to live godly? I have some good news for you. You're going to suffer some persecution. Encourage your neighbor, you're going to suffer some persecution. Isn't that good news? Isn't that wonderful? (laughs) But you know, the Bible says, Jesus said in Mark 10, the blessing comes with persecution. As a matter of fact, he said in Matthew 5, bless you when men persecute you. Revile you, speak all manner of evil against you. Leave for joy when that happens. Be excited about that. That means you're probably on the right track. How many of y'all believe you're probably on the right track? Because you've been going through a little bit of persecution, right? Praise the Lord. Now watch verse 13. Watch verse 13. But evil men and imposters will do what? Worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So he's talking about Christians. He's not talking about evil men and imposters in the world. He's talking about in the church. There are evil men in the church. I mean, you mean, Pastor, you're saying they're evil, just they're playing out evil? Yes. Doesn't your Bible say that even Satan can transform himself into an angel of light? Satan himself will transform himself into an angel of light. In other words, he'll make himself look like, hi, I'm the answer to all your prayers. Girl, I'm the one you've been looking for all this time. <laughs> right? Or, or, man, you know, whatever. So there are evil men, but notice what it also says here, and imposters. Now, you know what an imposter is, right? It's fake. Pretending. So evil men and pretenders. Notice what it says. We'll grow, we can say over time, from each generation, grow worse 
and worse. Now watch what's happening. Why? Deceiving and being deceived. So they're deceiving, and it's because they are being deceived. They're being deceived. And here's what the worst thing about being deceived is. This, I learned this from Dr. Bill Winston. Worst thing about being deceived is you don't know you're deceived. You don't know you're deceived. I mean, if you knew you were deceived, you wouldn't be deceived. So when you're deceived, you don't know it. Till afterwards, and they already got all your money out your account. Because they had, they had an inheritance in Nigeria that they need to get somebody. Right? So notice, again, there are evil men out there and imposters. Growing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now look at the next part, verse 14. But you. In other words, we can't stop the evil men and imposters from doing what they do. But you must continue. This is what I want to make sure you all know tonight before you go home. You must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of. Don't listen to the imposters and the evil men, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So I have to continue in what I've learned. Everybody say continue. Continue. So there are evil men and imposters. They're deceiving and being deceived. Right? We know from, from the other, other places over there, uh, we just read in back in 1 Timothy that there's uh, seducing spirits or um, uh, doctors of demons, or both, I should say. But how do I keep from being deceived myself? How do I keep from being tricked by the imposter? I have to continue with what I have learned. In other words, I don't get so, here's, here's your word out there, woke. So many people in the church now are so woke, so enlightened, that you, so intelligent that you're not looking for new stuff. Now, I'm just telling y'all, y'all didn't say anything on that, but I'm telling you what's happening. And that's a trick of the enemy right now. Put Proverbs 18, verse 1 on the screen. Put Proverbs 18, verse 1 on the screen. Let me show you how the enemy is tricking. Let me, let me show you how the enemy is setting up the church right now. A man who self-isolates quarantine for 14 days, 30 days, 2 months. Seeks his own desire, he raises against all wise judgment. Give me the King James on that. Give me the King James. Give me, give me the KJV on this verse right here. I want you to see what it says. Glory to God. Through desire, a man having separated himself, isolated. This is, what, this is what, what's being forced on people. Don't go to church. Zoom every once in a while. See if you can catch the broadcast. 20 minutes of it. But stay isolated. Stay separate. And he says, here's what, what God says. He seeks and intermeddleth with all wisdom. That means that while you're sitting up by yourself and you watch 20 minutes of your pastor, but then at the, as soon as this YouTube goes off, there's another little click you can find. There's a, there's a yoga man and there's a Buddha man and there's a Hindu man and there's a, this doctor man and there's this denomination man and there's this guy, there's that guy, and you think you got all your members corralled and no, they're all over the place. They're eating, they're eating, they're eating, they're mixing their, they're, they're mixing their uh, seed, put mixed seed in their field, the Bible says. Does your Bible say, do not sow mixed seed in your field? But people are isolated themselves, or government enforced isolation, or church endorsed isolation. It is church endorsed isolation. People are, people, I mean, the state of Florida is all open, and people are saying, I'm not going back, I'm not going to church. We're not having church. Just keep watching us online. Well, great. But they're isolated, deep. So all of a sudden, all this wisdom. And guess what? 
even if it doesn't come through YouTube, Tony. Remember those doctors of demons? Hey, hey, hey. I just want to tell you something. I got an idea. I had a thought. Isn't this cool? Don't you like this? You don't even have to get dressed. So then two months from now, when all the churches are open back, everybody go back to church. The pastor's going to be saying, all right, everybody come back to church now. They're going to say, no, you told me we are the church. You told me wherever I am, I am the church. So I'm just going to, I'll catch you online when I get around to it, Reb. See, so these doctors of demons are all over the place. So how do I keep myself from being deceived, from being seduced, from being, uh, from departing from the faith? I continue in the things which I have learned and been assured of. How do you get assured of something when you see the manifestation, when you see the experience, when you hear a testimony of somebody being healed of cancer? Now, I'm assured of that. When I've been healed myself, I'm assured of it. I don't just believe it. I'm assured of it. Is there anything in, in you that you've been assured of? I mean, do you know God as a way maker? Do you know God as a healer? Do you know he's a door opener? Do you know he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator? I mean, we're not, we're not just preaching it and singing it and talking about it. No, I know for myself. Tribulation works patience and patience works experience and experience hope and a hope makes me out of shame because of the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. I have experience in this thing here. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I don't need any other stuff. <laughs> so I got to continue on what I've learned. And been assured of knowing from whom I've learned them from. And that from childhood I've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16. All Scripture, all Scripture. I don't throw any part of it out. That's one of the deceptions of the, of the modern day church. They're ripping whole, whole chapters and whole books out of the Bible. No, all Scripture is given by inspiration, of, including the Old Testament, is given by God. In fact, that's what the Scripture he's referring to because they didn't have a New Testament. They were in the New Testament. So it's given by God and it's profitable for doctrine, teaching right there, for reproof, for correction, for instruction on right living and on right standing with God. That the man of God, the woman of God, every one of us, not just preachers, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So my question for you tonight is, is what things have you learned? What things have you learned? Because we're, we're in a crisis, or they're in a crisis. We're just caught up in the middle of it. What word from God's word are you standing on right now? This, I want you to answer this. I want you to answer it right now. What word from God's word are you standing on? And I want you to get your answer because I'm going to give you all a chance to, to say it. Because I'm going to give you some scriptures of things that you have learned because I'm just reflecting back on what I've taught in this church. Okay. Things you've learned. Things that watching my life and the life of others you should be assured of. Things, some, some of these things, many of you, things you've experienced in your own lives what you should be assured of, and what you can stand on knowing from whom you've learned them. So what do we know? 2 Corinthians 5.21, here's one thing I've learned. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say that, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, I know that. I've been taught that, I've learned, and I know it. <laughs> 
Galatians 3, 13 and 14. I learned that I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I learned that Jesus Christ became a curse for me. For it's written, curse everyone who hangs on the tree. So that the blessing of Abraham could come upon me that I might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So I've learned that I'm not cursed. I don't care about no curse of ham, sham, whim wham. Come on, Robert. <laughs> I don't care about no curse of no ham. Black folk curse. I'm like, what are you talking about, no black folk curse? You gotta stop saying that. You just you just living stupid. You just breaking spiritual laws. <laughs> curse of ham. You stop eating so much ham, your blood, your blood pressure come down. <laughs> hallelujah. Say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. that and I, I realize from verse 14, I'm blessed, I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. So in the midst of a pandemic, I'm still blessed. I don't expect a decrease, Oscar. We're hobos. He's making room for us, Oscar. <laughs> I learned from 1 Peter 2.24 that Jesus Christ bore all my sins on a tree and with his stripes I was healed and if I was healed then I am healed. Glory to God. I'm not worried about a virus. I was healed already. See that's all I'm standing in this time right now. Glory to God. I don't have to duck and dodge. You're not wearing a mask? No, you are. You are. We're good. You're wearing a mask. I'm good. <laughs> you got us covered. I'm covered by the blood. By the stripes I was healed. I learned, and I've taught you in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for my sakes he became poor, that I through his poverty might become rich. So I'm not worried about anything. Thank God for the little government stimulus check, but that ain't that. Oh my God, that ain't gonna change my life. Glory to God, I sow more than that in a, in a month. I mean, that's what we're talking about. That's just more seed for me. What are you talking about? I don't live off that. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. No, I'm made rich. Because Jesus Christ became poor for my sake. Yeah. That through his poverty might be rich. Right. If you don't understand it, look it up in the Greek. You'll see he means plenty of money. Yeah. Look up every Greek word in that verse. He means plenty of money. Yeah. I learned from Philippians 4.19 that because I'm a partner, yeah. my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> I learned from Psalm 103, verse 3, that God forgives all my iniquities and he heals all my diseases. What have you learned? What are you standing on? I'm going to have microphones. I'm going to let y'all call it out. I want to hear what y'all standing on. If I call out your scripture, get another one. I learned from Romans 5, 17, that by the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, I reign as a king in life. I know it. I've learned it. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. So I'm not worried about anything. I'm not, I'm not disenfranchised. I'm not underprivileged. I reign as a king in life according to the word of God. Y'all may, may not know that one. I'm not underprivileged. I'm not disenfranchised. I reign as a king in life. I've received an abundance of grace. I've received the gift of righteousness and I reign as a king in life. <laughs> Let me read one last verse and then I'll, I'm going to quit. I got some more to go, but oh, I didn't even notice. Good thing I, I'm stopping because I ran out of ink on the paper. Didn't, baby, we had to re replace the ink cartridge when we get home. Somebody use all the ink for their little uh, wow. I can't even see the notes. So I better stop here. <laughs> Give me Hebrews 10.23 in the King James, please. Hebrews 10.23 in the King James. I ran 
Johnny. Let us hold, listen, in the midst of it. If, if Paul's telling us this, it's because everything's coming against you to not do this. He says, let us hold fast the profession, profession that is the Greek word homologio, the speaking, the confession of our faith without wavering. For, this is the part I love about it, he is faithful that promise. You know the word says in, in, that all his promises are yes and amen. amen. He is faithful. So what you and I have to do is make sure we hold fast our, our profession. I, I, I maintain my profession. I don't change my profession based on what's going on. No, if, I, if I'm speaking I'm healed because his word says I'm healed, I stay on I'm healed. If I'm speaking that I'm provided for because his word says that he supplies my needs, then I stay on that word. It doesn't matter what goes on. I understand job loss and furloughs and cutbacks and all that kind of stuff. But I'm, I, my confession wasn't about a job. My confession was about his supply. So we have to hold fast. Hold fast means hold it tight. Because everything in you, Shante, is trying to pull that confession to make it change. So I got to know I'm going to hold tight. Even if I don't feel it, even if I can't see it, even if, if nothing looks like it, I'm going to hold fast my profession of faith without wavering. Because he who promised is faithful. 